G'day and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'd like to share with you my first true love, and that is my Canon 5D Mark III. Tomorrow, I'm sending this camera off to its new owner. Before I let it go, I wanna share with you my favorite moments through the years that I've had with this camera. First, I think it's important to tell you how I came to be with the 5D Mark III. It started with 4DD. We explored the wonder of photography together and I learned what photography was all about. And it was this camera that I took my first ever bird photograph. And from there, everything changed for me. It didn't take long for the 7D to catch my attention. Much more megapixels, a higher frame rate. I just had to acquire it. Unfortunately, I was extremely careless with the 7D and I didn't take proper precautions. And before long, I accidentally got too much salt water in the camera and it just stopped working. So I sent it off to Canon to be repaired and I got this distressing response. Liquid penetration had caused erosion of its major internal parts and it was uneconomical to repair. So I was back on the market and looking for a reliable, hardworking camera with high ISO performance. The camera that fit those requirements was the 5D Mark III. I knew it had a low frame rate and a pretty woeful buffer. I was willing to overlook those negatives and focus on the positives. So I ordered the camera and I awaited its arrival. It arrived the day before I actually flew to New Zealand and then onto the sub-Antarctic. So I didn't have any time to play with the camera. First time I used this camera was in a swamp in Christchurch, New Zealand. This black wing still came into land and I rattled off a number of shots with my 405.6. And when I looked on the back of the camera, I was just simply amazed. The colors were beautiful, the detail was amazing and that high ISO performance was just extraordinary. And I knew I'd made the right decision. So unknown to the 5D3, I'd actually got the 1DX on loan to take with me. I expected to use the flagship camera the entire time. I was just gonna use the 5D3 as a backup landscape camera, but for some reason it didn't take long before I gravitated back towards the 5D3. And I just liked the larger files of the 5D3. I probably used the cameras almost equally the same. So one of the highlights of the trips was a session I had with some Southern Royal Albatross. And using the 5D Mark III, I managed to get this lovely portrait shot, which I really do like. And I got a lot of other shots where the 5D3 performed well, even in low light. So the relationship I had with the 5D3 just continued to blossom over the next four years and we took over 120,000 photos together and photographed numerous species of birds. One, one of the highlights was a trip to the Northern Territory where I got to photograph a number of new species. They included this comb crested jacana, which walks on the lily pads. And I also got this shot of a broad-billed flycatcher. Now, the only downside to this location was there were a lot of crocodiles there, but thankfully we got away unscathed. So I also treated the 5D Mark III to a trip to Melbourne, and we visited the historic and famous Surge Western Treatment Plant, also known as the Pooh Farm, Luckily, I got this shot of the elusive black falcon. I didn't have any other shots of this bird and I really haven't got any since. So I was very happy to get this shot when I got it. I also had the luxury of encountering some pink-eared ducks, which are, were fairly elusive for me at the time and I hadn't had the chance to photograph them. So I was really stoked to get a few nice shots of them. The 5D3 also accompanied me on a 13-hour one-way journey I made with a couple of mates to the outback of South Australia when there was a report of the elusive and rare scarlet-chested parrot. We made the drive, it was well worth it. So we got a number of shots of these scarlet-chested parrots and some crimson rosellas or yellow rosellas and I was absolutely overwhelmed with how the 5D3 performed and the photos we got.
One of my favorite trips was actually a trip I took to New Zealand with a couple of mates. A couple of the photos that I really enjoyed of this endemic Takahe, which was deemed to be extinct at one point, but thankfully they found some remaining birds through a breeding program. There's now, you know, a sustainable population. And you can see here, I just love this photograph with the wind blowing the feathers. Overall, a really nice photograph. And New Zealand also has this honey eater, this amazing tui with its iridescent green and its beautiful colours. So I was really, really happy to get a nice portrait headshot of this bird. I took so many great photos with this camera, I thought I'd create a gallery on my website with all my favourite images that you're free to check out in the description. Possibly my favourite photo I've ever taken, and I've shared it before on this channel, is this one of these black wing stilts. I just really, really love this image, just because of the symmetry. There's lots of different reasons but I took it with the 5D3 before the sun had come up with my 500 and I just really liked this photo. I also had a really enjoyable session with this pied oyster catcher and the chick. It was showing it how to feed and we were just laying there, me and a few mates, and we spent probably an hour or two with these birds and they just fed in the vicinity of where we were and we rattled off hundreds of shots and uh, this was one, of, one I really enjoyed because it sort of captured that moment that the adult is feeding the bird and sort of teaching it what prey to get and how to get it. This portrait shot of a crimson rosella, again, a very popular shot of mine and one I like, just that pose over the shoulder, the light hitting the back, the colors, just everything about it works for me. And again, taken with the 5D3. So I'm not well known for my bird and flight shots, but I have taken a few with this camera. This crested turn is possibly one of my better shots where I tracked it with the sand background. That's that color you can see as it was actually coming in to feed some young birds that were calling. So I sort of tracked the bird as it flew in and then hit the shutter and then it came down to land and managed to get this nice shot with plenty of detail and the fish in its mouth. So another session that I'll never forget with this camera was the one where I took all these reflection shots, which I have shared before, but I'll show them again. Uh, the 5D3 just excelled with this morning light, uh, capturing this action, this uh, redneck stint, feeding in the water with the ripples coming away. Again, another one of my most favorite shots that I got with this camera. I'd seen the 5D Mark IV released, and I couldn't help but dream about the improvements, the bigger sensor, uh, the higher frame rate, you know, the better autofocus. I held off for long as I could. I wanted to be content with the 5D Mark III and just keep this, but unfortunately the 5D4 went on sale with a free memory card and I just couldn't resist and I placed the order. Took the camera out for one last session, went to my favorite location at the beach at a lake and we photographed some double banded plovers. It was a really enjoyable session and it was kind of funny because I was photographing these birds knowing my relationship with this camera was about to end, but these birds were just about to fly back to New Zealand and start a new love story of their own. So I returned home and I put the camera away and thanked it for all the great memories that we shared together, all the amazing photos that it provided me and thanked it for all its hard work. It sat in the sort of cupboard in my bag as a backup for the next three years. It did feature in a couple of YouTube videos, the one I did recently with the butterflies. I took most of those shots with this camera. You can check that out above. But overall, it was uh, been a really good backup camera. But recently I acquired a mirrorless camera and that means I no longer need my 5D Mark III. It no longer fills that backup role. Instead of resigning this camera to living in the dark until it dies, I thought I'd better put it up for sale and let someone else enjoy it as much as I have. So that's what I've done, and I sold it today. I'm gonna to post it for tomorrow, and that person hopefully will enjoy it for what it is, and that is a bloody fantastic camera. Well, I hope you, <laughs> I hope you liked my attempt at humor. My wife thinks I'm a little bit crazy for doing this video. And I should mention, she's my true love. Of course she is, not uh, a camera. Is it weird that I love a camera? Let me know below in the comments what the first camera was that you loved. But one of the main reasons for me doing this video is that this is now becoming a very popular secondhand camera because it's become quite affordable. You can pick it up for, what, five to 700 US, probably 700 to 900 in Australia. And for that money, you're getting a very good full frame camera that's gonna produce amazing files. So I guess if you've got 500 bucks to spend and you want a full frame camera, this is definitely one to consider. As you can see from all the photos I've shared and on my gallery, it did me extremely well and I'm very, very happy with this camera. And like I said, I'd use it again in a heartbeat. All right, well, that brings me to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed my attempted humor. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. 
giving it a thumbs up definitely helps the channel because it lets YouTube know which videos are popular and it helps this one get some traction. Also, you've probably heard me say subscribe if you want to see more of this content. If you're not sure what that means, all it means is if you hit the subscribe button, my videos are going to pop up in your home, YouTube homepage more regularly. So you'll see my videos on a more regular basis. You're not going to get spammed by YouTube or have to pay any money. Of course, I'd like to thank all the new members that have joined the channel who do support it directly. Thank you very much. Until the next video, take care and see you later. Oh, I'm going to miss you. You've been so good to me. Be good to your new owner. <laughs> so it didn't take long before I acquired the 7D and we started a whirlwind we started a world whirlwind so so where I got got and some of the memories I and some of the memories from that the memories from that trip will stay with me and it'll you could say the honeymoon I had with this camera is about as good as you'd ever get as a photographer